We continue now at the top of Daf Kuf Yodam and Beis and Mesachas Yavamas. This is Yavamas Daf 110b. The Gemara here is in the middle of a proof from the Mishnah. The Mishnah is talking about a situation of a chareshes of a woman who is a deaf mute. And the Gemara is assuming we're talking about where she is a deaf mute from the outset. And it seems to be saying in this Mishnah, Cholitz Lo, that Chalitza is not a possibility. As Rashi over here says, Cholitz Lo Misham Kriya, again, because there are psukim that have to be recited at a Chalitza, and she's not able to do the reciting of those psukim. And therefore, it seems even in a situation of a Chareshes Meikara, there's a problem doing Chalitza. And so the Gemara answers along the same lines as on the previous Amud, Lo, no, but Pikachas V'yachrakach Nizcharsha. What we're talking about over here is, is that she was a Pikachas originally, and therefore at the time of the marriage it was a Doraisa level marriage, and then she became a deaf mute. So in such a situation there, everybody agrees that Chalitza is problematic because you have a situation of an obligation at the Doraisa level, and then again the Chalitza cannot be performed properly because of the lack of the ability to read, to recite the proper Psukim, and therefore it's not going to be okay. But again, if it would be a situation where she was a chareshes from the outset, chalitza might be okay. And the Gemara continues, Toshma, come in here, a proof from the following b'raisa, Shnei achin, pichin, nesu, and shtein nochrios, let's say you have a situation of two brothers that are healthy, and they're married to two women not related to one another, achas pikachas v'achas chareshes, and one of them is healthy, one of them is a deaf mute. So the halach is, meis pikayach bal hachareshes. If the one who is married to the chareshes, if he dies, so ma yas a pikayach bal pikachas, so what should the pikayach do who's married to the pikachas? So the halach is, kones the halach is, he can do yibam, he can marry the chareshes, imrotza lahotzi yotzi, and of course if he wants a divorcer, he can divorce her. Now what if it's the other way around? Meis pikeach bal pikachas. Let's say the one that dies is the one married to the pikachas. Mayas a pikeach bal chareshes. So what is the pikeach who's married to the chareshes? What does he do? So the halach is, O chole tzomiyavim. The halach is, he has a choice. He can either do chalitza or can do yibam. There's no problem doing chalitza over here, certainly, because the woman is a pikachas. And so the Gemara continues, My love is it not? Miduhu pikeach meikara. From the fact that when we talk pikeach, we're talking about a pikeach from the outset. So he na mi chareshes meikara. So she also, when we're talking about a chareshes, we're talking about a chareshes from the outset. The katani kones. Uh, kones in cholets lo, and what does it say over here? Again, in the beginning, it says, "Mayas a pikeach bal pikachas." What should the one married to the pikachas do? Kones, he should marry the chareshes, but it's not giving you an option of chalitza. Kones in and chalitza lo, and so therefore you see again, you see a situation when you have a chareshes meikara. Apparently, chalitza is not an option. And the Gemara says, no, Midiria does it really have to be exactly the same. Hakadisa Vahakadisa could be each case is independent, meaning to say it could be that the Chareshis is not a Chareshis Meikara. It could be the situation is she was a Pikachas at first, and then she became a deaf mute, and that's why Chalitza is not an option. And the Gemara continues, Eisve, we have a question from the following Mishnah. Shnei Achim, let's say you have a situation of two brothers, Echot Pikeach Ve'echot Cheresh, one of them is a Pikeach, and one of them is a deaf mute. Nesu and Shnei Achayos, and they're married to two sisters, Achas Pikachas Ve'achas Cheresh, one of them is a Pikachas, and one of them is also a deaf mute. So the Mishnah says, Meis Cheresh Baal Cheresh, if the Cheresh who's married to the Cheresh, if he dies, so Mayas Pikeach Baal Pikachas, so what does the Pikeach who's married to the Pikachas do, what does he do regarding the Cheresh? So the halach is, Teitzei Misham Achosisha, she's exempt from Yibam completely, because it's a situation where she is the sister of his wife. Meis Pikeach Baal Pikachas, now let's say it's the Pikeach who's married to the Pikachas, he's the one that dies. So Mayasa Cheresh Baal Cheresha, so what is the Cheresh who's married to the Cheresha, what is he supposed to do with the Pikachas? The halach is, Motzi Asishto Beget, the halach is, he actually has to divorce his current wife, the Cheresha, with a get. The Eish Azachim and the wife of his brother, the Pikachas, Asur Alolam, she is forbidden to him forever. And Rashi over here explains, Motzi Ishto beget the Zekas Achosa Pikachas Osarta, because there is now a bond to her sister between him and her sister, and she was again, she was the Pikachas, and that's going to answer his current wife. Shani Gemur, because the Pikachas had a full marriage, as a Doraisa marriage. Vizu Safik Vein Koach Bekidusha, Liftor Es Achosa, Misham Achosisha. But over here, his marriage, the situation of the Cheresh and the Chareshes, is not a Nisuah Gemur, and it's not a full fledged marriage. Rashi says it's only a marriage at the level of Safik. And therefore you have a situation where her kiddushin, this kiddushin that's not a full kiddushin, is not going to be enough to patter the sister in terms of Yibram from Achos Isha. So therefore what he's going to have to do is, number one, he'll have to divorce his, his current wife. And furthermore, he'll be completely forbidden from marrying the widow of his brother. Why? Because there's no option of chalitza. Because the cherish isn't able to do chalitza. He also, he can't marry her. Because 
because really she's the sister of the woman that he just divorced. Because again, the Chareshes was somewhat married, even though it was not a full marriage, she was somewhat married to this brother who was alive, to the Chareshes. Therefore, you have no solution over here. And Rashi over here continues, We're not asking a question from this Mishnah on our issue in terms of Cheresh Meikara. Because over here, anyhow, there's no Chalitza. Here, the Cheresh can't do Chalitza with the Pikachas anyhow. Because the Pikachas was married to the Pikach. It was a full Zeik, it was a full bond. There would be no way to say that the same way she enters the marriage, she's able to leave the marriage, which was the logic to be lenient in terms of Chalitza, where we say if she entered on a Durabon level so she can leave on a Durabon level, here you don't have that because you have a full Zeik anyhow. So the fact that he can't perform chalitza is not the issue and that's not what we're bringing a proof to. The only reason we're bringing this mission is for the following reason. We're trying to show that the first two questions that we asked from the first two sources, that those are talking, that those are also talking about cases where they were deaf mutes all along. Because all of these Mishnayis and Brises are all taught together. So we're assuming if this one is talking about a Cheresh Meikara, we want to make the assumption that the other ones are also a Cheresh Meikara, and therefore the earlier questions that we asked should in fact be proofs to whether a Cheresh Meikara or a Cheresh Meikara is able to be involved in Chalitza. And so the Gemara continues, V'chitem, if you're going to say, Hachanami, B'pikeach v'achakach nischarish, maybe you'll say over here in this Mishnah also, we're not actually talking about a situation of a Cheresh Meikara, someone who's a deaf mute from the outset, we're also talking about a situation where the person was a Pikeach and then was nischarish, but that would not make sense in this Mishnah, because mi Matzimapik, because a Cheresh would not be able to divorce, because again, it's saying here at the end of the Mishnah, that what happens over here is motzi as ishto beget. The cherish bal cheresh should divorce his wife with a get. That wouldn't be possible if it was talking about a pikeach ve'achakach nischarish. Why? Because what's not? Because we learned in a Mishnah. Nischarish, if you have, let's say, a situation of a woman who becomes a chareshes, so yotzi, you can divorce her. Nishtat is lo yotzi. The halach is if a woman becomes mentally incompetent, he's not allowed to divorce her. We'll see Rashi on that in a moment. Nischarish, who on nishtata, let's say you have a situation where he becomes the cherish, or he becomes nishtata, lo yotzi, olam, he's not able to divorce his wife forever. And so therefore, clearly, we're not talking about a situation where the person, the man, became a cherish. It must be the situation is, He's a cherish meikara. El alav be cherish meikara must be talking about a case of cherish meikara. Umiduhu cherish meikara, and from the fact that he is a cherish meikara in this mishnah, he nami cherishes meikara. She also must be a cherishes meikara. Umidachoyos cherishes meikara, and from that fact that in this case of the sisters, they're cherishes meikara. Nachrios nami cherishes meikara. The case of the where they were not actually related, where it was the two women that weren't related from the brides before, also they were charoshes meikara. Utsnan gabe nachrios, and yet again, what does it say? In that case earlier in the brides, it said kones in cholitz lo that the option of yibum was an option, but chalitza was not an option, and so therefore you do see a proof from those earlier sources that by charoshes meikara chalitza is not an option. And so the Gemara continues ishtik. When Rabbi heard this question, he was quiet. The Gemara continues, Ki yosel l'kami de Rav Yosef, when he came in front of Rav Yosef, Amar Lehi said to him, My time may tosve me ha, why are you even asking from that particular mission over there? Di yochel l'shanu yelach, because from that mission I could answer you as follows, Achoyos charoshes meikara, maybe the case of the sisters there, it is a situation where they, where they were charoshes from the outset, but nachrios pikchos v'yachakach nescharshu, maybe they're not all the same, maybe the brais about the nachrios, where they were not related, the two, the two wives were not related to one another, maybe they they were first pikeach, and then they became chareshes. Eli boy lach Rather, says Rav Yosef, if you wanted to ask a question, you should have asked from the following. And we'll take a look at Rashi over here. Rashi says, Mi motzi mapik. Again, if you're talking about a situation where he was a pikeach, and then he became a cheresh, so then he wouldn't be able to divorce her at all. It has to be that he was a cheresh meikara. The katani motzi es ishto beget. It says again, this person has to divorce his wife with a get. Omidikatani beget, mashma shetemu teres lacherem. Sounds like if you're giving a get, she's now going to be mutter to others. And again, that would not be possible if he was a pikeach vi'achrakach nescharish. And that's why the Gemara said it must be that he's a cheresh meikara. 
Kara. And so then the Gemara said, Nishtatis Lotetze, the Gemara brought a proof to this idea, again, that in a situation where he becomes a Cheresh, he can't divorce her. And in the Mishnah that it brought, it also gave the following distinction that if she becomes a Cheresh, then he can divorce her. But if she is Nishtatis, if she becomes mentally incompetent, he can't divorce her. Now, what's the difference? So Rashi over here says, Pikachas and Nishtatis. If you have a situation of a woman when she gets married, she's a Pikachas, but then she becomes a Shota, Lotetze Mibala, she's not able to be divorced from her husband. Now, even though in general, a woman can be divorced against her will, therefore she doesn't really need to be das, she doesn't really need to have das in order to be divorced. Nevertheless, the Rabbonin made a special takana on her behalf that if she's nishtatis, she can never be divorced by her husband. That way people will not treat her treat her in a hefker manner. She doesn't know how to protect herself properly. However, a deaf mute, the man is allowed to the divorce her, even if she became a deaf mute later on, to lo ba'inon das isha beget, because we don't require the das of a woman by a get. Sharei afilo pikachas bal karcha motzi, like we said, even a regular situation of a divorce can be against the will of the woman. V'hachalotikon rabbonan midi doha yodas lishmor atzma by a chareshes, she's able to protect herself, she knows how to take care of herself, so that Rabban did not make any takana on her behalf. And Rashi continues, Nischaresh Huvachulu, again, if he becomes a Cheresh, so then again, like we said, he can't divorce the Kiddushan Ayugamur, because at the time of the Kiddushan, he wasn't a Cheresh, it was a full Kiddushan. The Gerishin below Das, and the Gerishin is without any Das. And so then the Gemara said, from the fact that in this case we're talking about Meikara, so too by the women they're Meikara, and so too in the earlier Bryson, Nachrios Nami, Hanachtati Delel Cheresh's Meikara Kamar, there also, it must have been they were Cheresh's from the outset. Dagabe Hadadi Tanya, like Rashi said before, these were all taught together. Now Rashi points out, Somebody might ask, what do we need to say from the fact that he's a Cheresh, so she's also a Cheresh's Meikara, and so therefore in the earlier case, why do you need to go through all those steps? From the fact that he is, so is she. And from the fact that the case of the sisters, it's Meikara. So to when they're not related, it's also Meikara. We should just say simply as follows. From the fact that he's a Cheresh, so to earlier, they are Cheresh. I'm talking about the males over there. And again, it says that marrying is an option. Chalitz is not an option. So Rashi responds with something similar to what Rashi said before. Lav milsi. That's not really a good point. Because any time we were talking before about the cases of the char- the Cheresh on the male side, the woman who fell before them in terms of Yibam was coming from an original Kiddushan that was a Doraisa Kiddushan. So you don't have that logic of the same way they come into the marriage in a Durabonan marriage, they can go out in a Durabonan fashion. But specifically by the case of Chareshes earlier, you do have that possible logic, how she entered, that's how she can leave. Nevertheless, what do we say? We said that only Yibam is an option, and Chalitz is not an option, and that's why, again, that is the proof to this very issue. By Chareshes Meikara, do we say that Chalitz is an option or not? And in any case, the Gemara continues, as we said before, that Rav Yosef said to Rabbi, you should have asked from the following Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Let's say you have a situation of two brothers who are deaf mutes and they're married to two sisters who are healthy. Or maybe they're married to two sisters who are deaf mutes. Or let's say you have a situation of two sisters. One is a pikachas and one is a charashas. One is a pikachas and one is a charashas. Let's say you have a case of two sisters who are deaf mutes and they're married to two brothers who are pikchin. Or they're married to two brothers who are deaf mutes. Or they're married that one is married to a pikeach and one is to a cherish. In all of these cases, in all of these cases, they are potter from chalitza and from yibum. But if you have a situation where they were unrelated, the two women, so yichnosu, so then they can marry them, they can do the yibum. And if they want to divorce them, they're able to divorce them. And so therefore, if Yosef says, his proof as follows, Hey, Chidami, what's the case in this Mishnah? If you're going to say the cases, they were originally Pekeach, and then they became Cheresh, they became deaf mutes only later on. So then we said already before, it's not possible to divorce. Is it really possible for the man to divorce in such a case? But we learned in the Mishnah, Nishtatis lo Yotzi. Let's say you have a case of where she becomes Nishtatis, then she can never be divorced. If he becomes a Cheresh, or if he becomes a Shota, lo 
Yotzei Olamas, then divorce is not possible. He cannot divorce her. El Olav, Acharosh, and Meikara. And so therefore, again, Rav Yosef says a similar proof. It must be this mission is talking about where they're Cheresh Meikara, Umidahein Cheresh and Meikara, in Unami Cheresh and Meikara, from the fact that the men are deaf mutes from the outset, so to the women in these cases are deaf mutes from the outset. What does it say over here? It says, that if the women are not related to one another, then the option is to do Yibam. Apparently, the only option is to do Yibam and not Chalitza, even though it's a case of Charashas Meikara. And so the Gemara says, indeed, to Yufta the Rabba, to Yufta, this is indeed a refutation of Rabba's position. This is a proof that in a situation of Charashas Meikara, Chalitza is not an option. And Rashi over here says, If the situation is that the two brothers that get married are deaf mutes, so the marriage is going to be equal no matter who they married. No matter who they marry, it's always going to be a situation where it's not a full marriage, so to speak. The only way that they can really marry these women is through some kind of a hint, because we're talking about the situation where the husbands are deaf mutes. The same as the other case. Let's say the two women are Kharoshas. Knisos and Beramiza, the marriage is only going to be done through hinting. Even if the men are Pikeach, or Echad Pikeach Vechad Cheresh, or one of the men is a Pikeach and one is a Cheresh. Nisue and Shavin, it's going to be an equal level marriage, not a full marriage. Therefore, if you have a situation where you fall into Yib and one of the husbands dies, so then you're going to have a situation of Achosisha. It's a situation where she is the, uh, she is the sister of this man's wife that she wants to do even with and so you have this pator again of achos isha and then the Mishnah continued, Vim Hayu Nachrios, if the case over here is that they are not related, Umais Echad Mehen, and again, one of the husbands dies, so Yichno Sasheni, so then the second one is able to do the Yibam, the Lav Bar Chalitzahu, because the point is, Chalitza is not an option, oh, he ain't a Bas Chalitza, either he can't do Chalitza, because he's a deaf mute, or she cannot do Chalitza, because she's a deaf mute, and Rashi continues and points out, Umidahin Charash and Meikara Lo Garsin, and you don't actually need to take the step of the fact that the men are Cherish Meikara, so too the women are deaf mutes from the outset, you don't need that, because once the men are deaf mutes from the outset, that's already going to be a refutation of Rabbah. You can ask this question on Rabbah anyway, because again, it is a proof that in a situation of Cherish Meikara, where maybe you could have said the logic the same way they enter the marriage, so too they leave the marriage, still it seems to be that Chalitza is not an option. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Ketana v'chareshes v'chulu. It said, let's say you have a situation where a man has two wives. One of them is a Ketana, a minor, and the, the other one is a Charesh, is a deaf mute. So there we say that the two marriages are not of the exact same status, and therefore if you do Yibam or Chalitza with one of them, it does not exempt the other one from Yibam and Chalitza. And so the Gemara says, Amar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, Ashkachte l'Ravada Barava. I found Ravada Barava ul Rav Chona Chasone, and also Rav Chona, who is his son-in-law. The Yazvi v'kam mekavu akvosu b'shuka d'pum b'disa. That they were sitting and they were asking various questions uh, in the marketplace of Pum b'disa. Rashi says, Umikvu akvosu makilim talmidim svivam sheyubam l'shmo adivrayim. One pshat is, they were gathering students around them, talking and learning. L'shna achrina d'makvu akvosu m'shivin kushyo zelazeh. In other one is, they were asking and answering questions back and forth to one another, whatever the case is. They were doing this in the marketplace of Pumbadisa. V'yamri, and they said as follows, Hadetanan, that which we learned in the Mishnah, Ketana v'chareshes, we said again, let's say a person is married to a Ketana v'chareshes, then he dies, they both fall to Yibam. So, ain't bias achas me'en potera sarasa, if you do Yibam with one of them, it's not going to pat the co-wife. And so they said the following, Hani mili denaf lalei me'ach pikeach. This is only true in a situation where their marriage originally was to a brother who was a healthy brother. He wasn't a deaf mute himself. And so therefore we really don't know, their, we really don't know the status of each one of the marriages, which one is, so to speak, a stronger or the more primary marriage. What do we mean to say? Because we don't know. This Pikeach, the person who died, who was originally married to these two women, so did he prefer really the marriage with a Ketana? Or or maybe not. Maybe he preferred as his primary, he preferred his marriage to the Chareshes. And what are the two sides? Because it could be he preferred his marriage with a Ketana because one day she'll be an adult. She's going to have Das. Ibe Chareshes Nichor, maybe no. He saw his marriage with Chareshes as primary. De Gedoli, because she's an adult. Du Bas Biyahi, she's somebody you can have, one can have relations with. And so therefore, in such a situation, again, the two wives are not really the same status. We don't know which one is a stronger marriage than the other. And therefore, let's say the Yibam with one of them is not going to pater for the other.
But if you have a situation where the brother who died is actually a cheresh himself, so So then most certainly the cheresh is the more preferred, is the stronger marriage, the because he can have relations with her, and also she's the same as him. He's a cheresh, she's a cheresh. So in that case, we would certainly view it that she is the primary marriage, so to speak. And therefore, let's say Yibam would be done with her. It would in fact pat the co-wife who is a minor. So this is what he heard them saying. Again, this is Rav Nachman talking. So therefore, I said to them, meaning Rav Nachman is saying, I responded. When I heard this argument, I responded as follows, and I said, no. Even in a situation where she fell to Yibam from a marriage to the brother, the brother who died, who was also a cherish, he was also a deaf mute. Still in that situation as well, it is going to be a doubt. We really do not know which is the primary marriage, so to speak, and therefore we cannot say for certain that even with one is going to pat the other. It doesn't make a difference whether the person who died was a cheresh or a pikeach. And the Gemara continues, Ketzatakonason. So in any case, what is the way to fix this situation over here? As Rashi over here says, Ketzatakonason, the Ketana v'chareshes. So you have a case where a person is married to a Ketana v'chareshes. Now, since we're talking about where doing bia, doing yibam rather with one is not going to pat the other one, the charesh is la bas chalitzi. Now, you also can't do chalitza with the charesh, the nepok tarvayu be chalitza, so you can't do chalitza with both. Now, if you're going to do yibam, let's say to her, meaning to the charesh, and you're going to do chalitza to the, to the ketana, when she gets older, so the first one's going to become disqualified, to come lay below yivna, because you have a situation when you do chalitza with one, it's low you can no longer marry the other one. You're not going to say that the Bia of a Chareshes is going to be so strong to push off the bond completely. So the question over here is, what exactly do you do as a solution in this case? And so the Gemara says, Amar Rav Chista, Amar Rav, Rav Chista says, says in the name of Rav, here's the, the solution. Kones HaChareshes. First what he does is he marries the Chareshes. Umotzia Beget. He does even with her, but then he has to immediately divorce her with a get. O Ketana, and then when it comes to the girl that's a minor, Tamtena, Chetag, they'll just wait until she gets older. Betachlots, and then you can do Chalitza with the Ketana. Rashi over here says, Kones HaChareshes, Umotzia Beget, the Chalitza's Ketana, Tifsalola, because again, if you keep staying married to her, the eventual Chalitza with the Ketana will of course make her disqualified so he has to divorce her and then again what he's going to do is he'll wait until the katana gets older and when she gets older he'll do chalitza with the katana and the Gemara continues Amar of Chister of Chister says Shma mino kasava rav we see from this that rav holds chareshes kenuya umishuyeres the kenyanim or the marriage that happens by a chareshes is considered a marriage where there's something left off of the kenyan there's something missing but ketana kenuya veina kenuya ketana is a different status ketana is it's sort of she's acquired sort of she's not acquired it's kind of like a suffolk whether she is acquired or not Rashi over here says, Chareshes Kenuya B'Mixas Umishu Yeres. When it comes to the Chareshes, there's a something left off of the Kenyan. Ketana, Safik Kenuya, Kula, Safik Eina Kenuya, Klaab. But by the Ketana, it's a doubt situation where we don't know if it's a marriage fully at all or if it's not a marriage in any way. The Vishtayan Kenuya Sumishu Yaros Lekala You can't possibly say they both have the same status where they're acquired but there's something left off. The Vimasnis and Shamino Ladim Kane, Tiftar Chad, Babias Chaverta. Because then you should say that one of them, if one of them does Yibam, it should pat to the other one. They're the same status. Ushtei and Safek Nabi Lekalamim, and you also can't say that they're both considered to be a doubt. Meaning, Katani saved the Masnisan, because if you look at the end of the Mishnah, what does it say? Ba Yavam ala Katana, it says at the end of the Mishnah, let's say the Yavam has relations with the Katana, the Chazur Bala Chareshes, and then does the same thing with the Chareshes. Pasal has a katana. It says he disqualifies the katana. Ba yav mal chareshes and the other way around also. Let's say first he's with the chareshes. The chazur ba la katana then with the katana. Pasal as a chareshes. He disqualifies the chareshes. Be shteyan sofik. Now if they were both doubts, that wouldn't be true. So you can't possibly say that that is the case as well. And the Gemara continues, the Salgadaita Chareshes Knuya Vena Knuya. Let's say you think it's the other way around. The Chareshes is the one that's acquired and not, not acquired, meaning it's a suffix whether there's a, a Kedushan or not. And Ketana Knuya Meshuyaris, and by the Ketana, that's the one where there's a Kenyan where there's a little bit left off of the Kenyan. So then that won't make sense in terms of what Rav suggested. Chareshes Amai Konas Umutsiya Beget. Why is Rav suggesting that he should marry the Chareshes and then immediately divorce her? And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video. And Dav Kufyur. Aleph Amr Aleph.